and you're just like that's how the guitar sounds like right yeah that's exactly, exactly how guitar sounds i failed at a beginning guitar in high school hmm. wow you had a guitar class yeah it Man, was the only jealous or it was the elective i wanted to take and i was so bad at it that i my guidance counselor told me you need to leave this class or you're not going to graduate and then i took journalism <laughs> Here I get a rock star band. They'll give anybody an. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, I hope you're better at Risk of Rain too than you were at guitar. I think so. Oh, Ben's very good. <laughs> I I haven't beaten guitar, but I've beaten Risk of Rain too. So. Oh wow! Damn. Damn. Yeah. Uh, uh, Risk of Rain two uh, entered 1.0 last week. I want to say last mm-hmm. week. Uh, on Steam, at least, it's still coming to consoles. Uh, that update, but. I dipped back in. I, you know, I hadn't played it much since it first came out on Early Access, which was about a year ago. Um, Risk of Rain 2 is basically, you know, they took Risk of Rain 1, which was a 2D uh, platforming shooter, roguelike kind of game, you know, run-based, very dependent on random gear drops and stuff like that, and expanded it out to 3D with these like kind of huge open environments. Um, it's a game all about just like, you know, getting a getting a cool build, managing your cooldowns, and fighting huge, huge swarms of enemies that just get harder and harder over time. Uh, Jan, you played a little bit with us on the Quick Look yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was your first time. That yesterday was your first time playing it, right? Yes. Yeah. What'd you think? Um, the game. I, I tried to fire up a couple practice rounds before we recorded the Quick Look, um, and that game. If I hadn't already watched y'all play play it for the unfinished it does a very poor job at communicating what to do yes. and how to do it um the game has a a unseemly high barrier to entry um unfortunately i yeah. really do think that it's a bummer um if you're not playing with people who know what they're doing i, I could see it being quite hard yeah so like you know when you first fire up uh the game and you jump into like a single player level the one objective you see is to find and activate the teleporter. Uh, what the game doesn't tell you is that you should be, you know, trying to level up and, you know, defeat a bunch of mobs. And from the mobs, you'll get XP and money. And, you know, there's a bunch of treasure chests and random um, devices around the maps to use your money on. And I didn't exa- exactly remember that from the unfinished. So I immediately rushed to the teleporter. So I was super low level. And then here comes like this giant jellyfish monster <laughs> thing throwing electro balls at me and I can barely do any damage to it. Um, and the thing that I also forgot is the longer you spend on a specific zone, the more difficult it'll get. So yeah, that's There's a kind of a ticker in the top right that every 10 minutes you kind of enter a new phase. It's like easy, medium, hard, mm-hmm. crazy, impossible, you know, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. So the balance of the, in the gameplay really comes down to like, how long do you want to sit and open chest? Because there's a ton of interactables on every level. There's these huge levels with lots of level, like huge stages Whoa. with lots of levels. There's verticality and yeah. you know, there's a lot of... Uh, Nooks and zone. crannies, little <laughs> hidden chests everywhere. So like, if you wanted to sit and find everything in a level, it'd probably take you like 15 minutes for one stage um yeah. the game can go quite long i've had runs go upwards of 90 minutes um and like when you're when you're that far in it's just like everything is flashing because there's a million abilities popping out there's hundreds of enemies everywhere there's just so much shit going on that it's a little overwhelming but it's that kind of like it keeps you it keeps you glued to the game this this is a game like i have lost a lot of time to this is a game where i'm like when i'm done playing it sometimes it's 2 a.m i'm like oh my god jesus like where where am i do you have much desire to keep going now that you've now that you've done it you've climbed yeah the mountain? Uh, so i i only beat it on drizzle which is the easiest difficulty it's like drizzle something monsoon are kind of your your difficulty settings um the the, the main appeal for me in that game is a game with tons of secrets there's secret characters there's unlockable items there is stage specific bosses for certain stages there are you know like puzzles there are these artifacts that you can collect there's just tons and tons and tons of stuff um so for me right now the kind of the thing i want to do the most is unlock all the characters because each of the characters in risk of rain 2 play really different from each other like you start out with a very basic kind of soldier type unit who has like a gun 
a rapid fire shot, like a piercing bolt and a roll. And those mm -hmm. are kind of like his abilities. And it's very straightforward. And then you unlock usually the second character is like a huntress and she has kind of a lock on shot. You know, she has a little blink, pretty straightforward. But then like eventually you start getting weird characters like multi who's a guy with like two forms. He has a long range form and a close range form. And you're kind of swapping back between those. The character I am most fascinated with right now is the loader who has like a grappling hook and is all about like, latching onto enemies and swinging up on top of like was, bosses and then just punching the shit out of them she doesn't have like any long range abilities at all it was pretty hilarious uh vinny and i fumbling as soon as we summoned the boss and then you just see ben like swinging <laughs> at the very tippy top of the boss just like kind of panicking and not really knowing what to do but then we just you know put our blind faith into him carried us through the victory that sounds cool uh i will say it's for me personally, I did find it a lot more fun playing with other people rather than doing it single player. For sure. Um, and if you if you're playing in a multiplayer instance, if you were to die, there's no respawning as far as uh, as far as I know, unless you move on to the next zone. And the only penalty from that is that you are no longer collecting money or XP or some of the items. It was kind of a bummer though when one of us would die and we defeat the boss that. Uh, player that uh, has died that round can't collect any items that drop from from the boss which is a little bit of a bummer um and that doesn't really help scale if you do die early on in, in a round and you are able your team's able to carry on to the next um you're kind of left behind in terms of progress yeah and, and you can kind of supplement that by being like okay on this next stage i'm going to open all these chests for you jan and you pick up the items like mm -hmm. you know you can kind of at any time you can hit tab to see what everyone's build is and see like how many items they have because you really don't it is really a game you can fall behind in like if you die in two stages in a row and aren't getting all of the boss pickups and stuff you're just kind of screwed um on that front i think the coolest thing that they've done um since uh pre-release is uh they've kind of changed up this thing called artifacts and artifacts are unlockable secrets um there's a stage the fifth stage you have a chance to find this kind of computer and you enter a code and then it'll take you to a challenge. And if you do that challenge, you get an artifact and you can kind of choose which artifact you want. But the, the first artifact that pretty much everyone goes for is something called the artifact of choice. And it basically changes the game so that you can, um, instead of a random item dropping, you see like just kind of a white or a green orb drop and you walk up and you interact on that orb and it's all the items and you can basically choose your build. And it's super duper helpful because like it is a game where so like if you're really trying hard, if you're like, you know, I've I've got a few friends that I play with sometimes and we're like trying to beat it on hard. That's our goal right now. And up until we got that artifact going, it was very much a thing of like an item would drop and we'd be like, OK, who needs this? Who wants attack speed? Who who has a build that's geared for attack speed or who has a build that's geared for tankiness? And you'd ping the item and somebody would come from across the map and pick it up. But this way. Since you can choose the items, you can practice builds, you can like warm up and learn characters. It makes it really fun. It makes it like way less, you know, with with any sort of roguelike game, even if the items are well balanced and well designed, which I think they are in this one, you can just have bad runs. And it feels miserable, especially in this game, if you're like 45 minutes in and you haven't found like this happened during the quick look, you haven't found a single health upgrade. Yeah. Like nothing for healing at all. And you're just dying in a, in a couple shots. And so it's like, I'm not even having fun. But this supplements that. So you can be like, okay, I'm going to make sure I get two health items right away and then start building damage or whatever your build is going to be. Also, uh, if you are in a multiplayer uh, instance with some friends, the money accruing money is shared, but uh, you get your own individual pot of it. So you don't have to worry about uh, spending like the group's money if you're just dumping it into buying opening chests or like buying turrets or anything. How do you how do you end a run? You mentioned like Ben made it sound like you can die more than once. Like what is what is like a failure state? So if, if everyone dies on a map, um, okay. that's the end. Uh, but yeah, so I'm I'm glad you you brought that up because one of the things they added in 1.0 is a boss, uh, a final boss rather. The game up until this point just kind of looped forever, um, but they added a last boss. Basically, the way it works is every five stages you have a chance to fight the last boss, or you can do another loop, which is five levels. Oh, you get to pick. Yeah. Oh, so it's just like, oh, I don't feel like I'm powered up enough yet. I'm going to try to make it through another five and get more stuff and then do it. Interesting. Exactly. So, the, and I think, I think the boss is 
a real, real motherfucker. Yeah, I don't want to spoil what he does, but numerous people in the chat seem to think that that last boss is bullshit. It, it yeah, it, it has multiple forms, and the last form does something incredibly fucked up that I want people to be able to experience for the first time themselves. <laughs> um, I managed to beat it because I just had like a really, really strong build going um, on a run, and I like. I, I honestly just bursted him right away. It was just like, boom, he was gone, um, oh. which I wasn't expecting. Uh, but yeah, it's it's so, you know, it's um, it's hit 1.0. It's out on Steam right now. It's 20 bucks on Steam. It's 30 on consoles. Um, oh, I it was on console. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little behind on the updates. So that's still not 1.0 yet. You still don't have like the new artifacts, the new characters, the new boss and all that stuff on the console version. But uh, I think it's, you know, it's 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 a... Uh, I think Jan nailed it. Like it is very much a game that you want to play with other people. I've yeah. tried playing it solo just to like get some of the achievements so I can lock some items and it's fine. Like I'll put on a podcast or whatever while I'm playing it, but really at least like a group of three to four is really where that game shines. Is is everything you just described, is that what the first game is except 2D? Like, is it pretty much the kind of exact same set of concepts? Yeah, the the ticking the things I would say that that game like were the major things about that game was like the ticking up difficulty as you play, and the random items sure. um, in the does large it, stages. Does it have matchmaking, or do you have to play? With uh, there's online lobbies. Yeah, you don't have to download what what Hitachi. What yes. was that like third party thing that you? I remember <laughs> Whiskering One. You had to like set up a virtual IP mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. Oh, oh, oh H- Hamachi. Wow. Yeah, Hamachi. Yeah delicious do you get do you, do you get the sense uh that the, did they shake anybody loose in this transition from 2d to 3d that seems like a i mean i'm not gonna say risky exactly but you know what i mean like i could see some people maybe not wanting to make that transition i don't know like there are some I, people i yeah i could see folks uh skipping out on risk of rain 2 it's kind of like the uh maple story problem a lot of folks really enjoyed it being um 2d but then as soon as they transitioned to like isometric 3d a lot uh, there was like a lot of fall off and then um og maple story became huge because of that i think Some people just for me with handle. yeah i think for me like risk of rain was like i really liked the first game and i really liked playing it alone and, and doing all this other stuff and so when risk of rain 2 first hit early access like i i didn't much care for it because i was trying to play it alone and then when we recorded and played with other people and i was like oh okay like th- this you just this game is going to be most fun if you're playing with others uh, and and that kind of got me uh, going on it, but you know, you you could definitely like wrap your like the the concepts of the of the first game um, applying to this three D world. I think is a really neat, and they they pulled it off. Like it's it's a it's a weird thing that you look at and go like there there are like a billion ways this kind of could have gone wrong. Totally, but mm-hmm. I think they they I've not played one point oh yet, but like they they seem to have done a really good job with it. Sounds solid. Yeah, that sounds cool. I might actually have to check and it out. And I saw somebody mention it, so I have to mention it. The music in that game is... <laughs> I, I, I started out hating it. It's like this weird kind of like spacey prog rock that's just kind of like... type it of like deal. Subtle, and then it like gets really crazy, and then it comes in, but it's, it's like a fucking weird acid trip prog rock music that like... Initially, I was not down for it, but the more you hear it, it just gets in your brain mm-hmm. and you're shooting mm-hmm. a million lasers off and everything, and it, it just clicks eventually. That being said, uh, we both experienced this. The music mix in the game is incredibly loud. Oh, yeah. I dipped, we- I dipped like sound effects and volume to like 15%. Because mm-hmm. A, the music mix gets incredibly loud, especially just out of nowhere. It'll just really ramp up. And B, in the end game, when you have like a million abilities popping off that all have their own sound effect, it just is like <laughs> going at all times. The, the range of reactions between you guys and the chat about the music alone is making me want to check this game out. <laughs> I, I think you'd be really into it. Brad. I need to hear I, that for myself because yeah. Every, yeah. everyone in one way or another is going kind of wild about it. So. They're definitely like, like yeah, I mean, I... I think there are aspects of that game that you could liken to just like a prog rock album cover. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Right. right. I mean, so I, I think there's there's like conceptually that all makes sense. Huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. I I have not played that game in a while and and I yeah, I need to play some more of that game. That was a cool fucking game. Yeah. I I, I may also have to check this out. Made a strong pitch. <laughs>